In this video, I'll do a quick demonstration of creating a model for one of our commercial parts. And that this one's going to be the brake rotor. So I've started a new drawing. Make sure your unit's set for IPS inches, pounds, seconds. And I'll start a new sketch. OD is 10 inches, it's 3 16 thick, so I'll go to Features, Extrude, 0.187, finish my sketch, and I'll need to put that hub on there. Now you could also revolve this, it's another way to create that. And that's two and a half inch diameter. And that's that part's one inch thick. And then I'll need to put a hole in that. And that's a one inch diameter because we've got a one inch axle. Now also there is a keyway in here and I can just use the rectangle tool to create my keyway. And that's it's a one inch shaft uses a quarter inch key. And that'll be it's tall. Let's see, and I can trim. Trim all that. Oh, I should uh, make sure this is centered on there. And everything's black, so we know it's fully constrained. And let's go ahead and do an extrude cut. And cut that all the way through. And there's our brake rotor. So we want to save that. Now put it, let's see, let me, on my desktop, I'll make a new folder. You always want to put all of your details into one folder. And make sure you, name, you save it as the part number. So the part number for that is CP for commercial part 285-110. And that's what will show up in the title block when you put that on the drawing sheet. That's the next step. So we'll make a drawing. Now let's check your units. We know we're in inches, pounds, seconds, but let's make sure that we're in, go to options, make sure that you're using ANSI drafting standards, not ISO, the default might be ISO. If it says ANSI, but it's doing ISO, you may have to go back and cycle through to make sure that it's on ANSI, okay. So let's choose our view. Remember, the front view should be the main view. It should show the most information, fewest hidden lines. And that's the perfect front view. Think about a front view. If you only had one view of the part, what would it look like? And that's the perfect front view. Our right side view would be there. Top view here. And then we want to put an ISO view over there. And let's see how that looks. Now please use B size piece of paper. Do not put these on D size papers. Text and dimensions are way too small. If you need to change the paper size, just go over here and right click on sheet format. Oops. Right 
right click on sheet and go to properties and here you can choose your paper size in this case I have a B size anyway so I'm already on a B but that's how you change it again right click on sheet and go to properties okay we're, we're gonna want to make sure we see our hidden lines on our isometric views top front top right side view if you click inside of here click in that box right there that'll turn on your hiddens you'll see those you don't want to see hiddens on your ISO view unless you have a special situation where you need that. So since those views are kind of connected, I'll have to click in there and turn the hiddens off in there. So this is just a kind of a photo for you. Don't put dimensions, don't put hidden lines and those kinds of things on there. Now if you don't like this view, let's just delete that. Go back uh, over here and you'll see you have a, at the very bottom you have one that says current view. So if you go back to your model, turn the view the way you want that isometric view to look. So if I decide that's what I want, now go back to your drawing and come over here to the view palette. You'll have to refresh it and then go to the bottom and that current view will be what you get over there. So you're not stuck with whatever happens to pop up there. So you can adjust that view. So now I'm going to want to dimension that. Again, use good dimensioning practice. Now, I don't care for that. Those center lines, center marks are kind of obnoxious there. So uh, what I'm going to, I'm going to dimension this anyway. It'll give me some center marks. So just use your smart dimension tool. Remember, good dimensioning practices. Don't crowd the part. Don't put dimensions on top of the object. Don't dimension the hidden lines, all those kinds of things that you've learned in your other CAD classes. Now in this situa situation, because that's a broken circle, it's showing up as a radius, but the reality is that's a complete circle. So if you double click on that, you can come over here where it says dimension text, highlight that and delete it, and then put diameter and type it in. Right, you need to call out the full diameter. I need to dimension that keyway. Now it's tempting to do this but again, do not dimension on the part that's actually on the hub. Pull that dimension out here where it's away from the part. Let's see, I never did get my center mark. So let's see here. There we go. I need to, because the easiest way to dimension the height of this key is back to the center. Oops, didn't get it. And again, pull it outside the part. Uh, this view, I'm going to need the thicknesses. And two decimals, it's fine. Two decimals is fine. We can, obviously, we can change that as needed. Oops, that's not what I wanted at all. A little tight for space here. Uh, let's see. Let's see what I can do. Does that work? So in this situation, my right side and my top view are identical views. So I typically like to have three or the graphics. I really don't need that top view, but that's the exception, not the rule. You always think about three views so by eliminating that view I can give myself a little more space for dimension uh, one thing I'm missing here is I do not have a center line on this so I want to put a center line on there always show center lines for your holes and center marks okay so remember how I saved that model as that number that'll show up in the drawing number and that's what you need to see don't put a name in there put a drawing number here's your title that's where you can put the name of this part so using that note tool we will put the name of this part that's the brake rotor and put your name in here uh, your, your name's going to appear in this little teeny box it's just too small to read right so just do that very simple and I, th I think that I have everything on there okay so let's save this 
So I want to make sure it goes into that folder again. And again, it's saving it under the number, and then we want to save it as a PDF to hand it in. So you can either do a save as or do an export and just choose PDF. It's going to go in the same folder, same name, same folder. Now, I want your name on it, though. So put your name on the PDF when you turn it in. It doesn't need to be on the drawings, but it needs to be on the PDF. So everyone in the class is going to turn in the same drawing number, but I need to have your name on it. Or I'm not going to know who it belongs to. Okay, so now just send that to me. Put it in the Dropbox on Blackboard.